All right, so now to our deep dive into the U.S. electoral system. The latest CBSN Originals documentary examines whether the Electoral College either helps or hurts American democracy. It features voices on different sides of the debate and their takes on whether the process still works for deciding the next president of the United States. Here's a clip. It's like if you unfortunately have a disease that you knew was out there but never thought about, you're suddenly aware about what a terrible disease it is. And that's the way I experienced the Electoral College, a terrible disease on American democracy. Because of the Electoral College, presidential candidates serve themselves best if they work to build coalitions and if they try to appeal to a wide variety of people. The Electoral College sets up a system where every vote is not equal. I don't have a problem with the Electoral College itself. I actually think the Electoral College serves a purpose and is valuable. But the winner-take-all rule really has a perverted effect both on politics and policy. The history of majority rule in, in the U.S. is not always a good one. You have 538 people that elect the president. Do you really want 538 24-year-old Michael Bacchus electing the president? That's kind of dangerous. So Pennsylvania State Representative Malcolm Kenyatta is featured in that documentary. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as they may or may not have told you, I live in Philadelphia, so you are representing this great state um, that I call home. Um, let us dig in a little bit more happy. into That's sort of- That's why I'm so happy to talk to you this morning. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's great. And I lived in North Philly, but North Philly, well, we're not going to get into the what, how you define North Philly. But uh, right, now, not right now, I'm out of North Philly, but I live officially in North Philly. All right, so let us speak. Um, what is your take on the Electoral College? Is it time to get rid of it and why? You know, it's, it's past time to get rid of it, frankly. Um, we're in a situation right now where the Electoral College really perverts the will of the majority of the American people. Um, you know, and I've seen in, in just in my lifetime now, uh, multiple elections where the winner of the popular vote does not go on to win the presidency in direct contrast with what the majority of the American people want in direct contrast to the will of the American people. Um, that's deeply problematic. Um, I see the Electoral College as, you know, something that uh, you know, has a, a dangerous effect, frankly, um, on the future of our democracy. So you know what critics say, and you know, you know, the primary reason the electoral, electoral college was put into place was to make sure that the desires of states with smaller populations, smaller states, could not be railroaded over by others. We're talking about people living in rural America. You know, what do you say to them when they say, well, this is going to, something like this would silence our voice? Well, you look at the United States Senate right, right now. And, you know, every, every state has two United States senators, irrespective of population. And so uh, smaller states from a population or geographical perspective uh, are represented in the, in the process. Um, and ultimately, there is a history of the Electoral College that's also deeply rooted in racism. And so this is not about silencing anybody. It's actually about listening to the American people. If we say one one person, one vote, this is the actually the antithesis of that. It's not one person, one vote. It's allowing an antiquated system that serves no purpose uh, to continue to have this perverted effect on the on our American democracy and on the will of voters um, who show up every four years to determine who is going to represent all of us as president of the United States. So removing the electoral college could also sort of drastically change the landscape of American politics. I am Canadian, um, where there are multiple um, national parties. But one of the things that the Electoral College does is make it a lot tougher for a third party candidate to rise to any level of influence. They can sort of, every once in a while, they rise up and they become kind of um, single issue candidates and they may, you know, uh, push the conversation, but it's very difficult to get a foothold. Um, would that be a good thing, though, if you remove the Electoral College and we saw the emergence of more than two parties? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be a Democrat. If, uh, you know, folks, there are other parties here in Pennsylvania. If folks want to be a part of a, another party, you know, that's certainly up to them. That's what democracy is ultimately, you know, about. And they have to, you know, build 
the infrastructure and do what's necessary uh, to run that party. You know, what I'm interested in is making sure the Democratic Party represents working people, lifts up working families mm -hmm. like mine. And, you know, that really is where my focus is. And I think if we do that, um, you know, it doesn't matter who runs, uh, folks will be voting for the Democratic Party because we speak to the values of the majority of the American people. Um, you were an elector for Pennsylvania. Um, based on your experiences, did that um, have an influence on your, your take on the Electoral College and whether it's useful? You know, not, not, not really. Um, you know, I went into this process, I think, saying to folks, and I'd probably say at some point in the, in the documentary, uh, you know, incredibly torn. Uh, you know, obviously proud of the fact that Pennsylvania and the country writ large rejected uh, the former president. I saw your segment about the horrific violence toward members of the AAPI community. Um, much of it, I believe, stoked by the former president who, main, who uh, mainstreamed uh, some of the racist uh, language um, that we're seeing or, or as it relates to COVID and members of the Asian American community here. Um, and so I was happy to see him rejected and was happy to do everything I could to make sure now President Biden became president. But ultimately, you know, my feelings on this, you know, really stand. Um, let me ask you about sort of another uh, topic. Uh, you announced that you will be running for Senate. Uh, Pat Toomey is retiring. Um, so another kind of hot issue in the Senate right now is the filibuster and whether or not mm -hmm. it should go away. Obviously, being in the House, you can see the ease at which it is, how easy it is to pass sort of large pieces of legislation in the House when you just need the majority. Um, and things often get stifled and sidelined in the Senate. What is your take on the filibuster? The, the current president uh, sort of alluded to the fact that he's open to maybe reforming it, but not getting rid of it. The Senate needs to get rid of the filibuster. They should have done it a long time ago. Um, if I'm elected to the United States Senate, you can expect me to be a passion, ardent, and continuous advocate for us to get rid of it. Uh, the filibuster has been used time and time again in our history to stymie progress, particularly as it relates uh, to marginalized communities and working families um, in, in the United States. And so this is something that is necessary for us to deliver for the American people. You know, you have folks who act as if the, the filibuster was delivered to us from on high. It's not a part of the Constitution. It is not something that is necessary for the Senate to function. And, you know, I heard Mitch McConnell the other day saying that, well, if you get rid of the filibuster, uh, you know, we'll grind everything to a halt in the Senate. But that's what Mitch McConnell has done. His entire career. It's what he did the entire presidency of President Obama, including not allowing uh, President Obama to appoint a Supreme Court justice, one of the constitutional authorities that the president does have that he completely ignored. And so hearing those those comments that if you get rid of the filibuster, then we'll do then we'll do this. It sounds very much like an arsonist saying, if you take away my canister of gasoline, I'm going to burn down the house, even though they had that intent all along. We are in the middle of a crisis on a variety of different fronts. And what the American people want is for government to actually do something, to do something for them, to do something for their families. And I don't think folks at home want to hear, well, I'm sorry, we couldn't deliver for you because there's some arcane Senate rule um, that you haven't heard about until Mitch McConnell and Republicans started whining about it. You know, give me a break. Right. Uh, Malcolm Kenyatta, hopefully uh, we can have you on again to discuss uh, some of the issues that you have been campaigning on. I know you're interested in, in seeing an increase in the minimum wage. I know you're a supporter of the Green New Deal. So hopefully we can have you on again. Thank you very much. Anytime. Thank you for having me. So if you want to learn more about our country's election system and whether or not the Electoral College helps or hurts American democracy, do not forget to check out the CBSN Originals documentary, Speaking Frankly, Do We Still Need the Electoral College? It airs this Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on CBSN.